Welcome to the Certified Analytics Professional Informational Webinar sponsored by Informs. I'm Gary Bennett. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Informs. We just have a few housekeeping things to take care of first. We're very respectful of your time. The webinar is scheduled for 55 minutes and will conclude at the top of the hour. If anyone is having technical problems, just press star zero to reach a live operator on the phone or send us using a uh, send us a comment by using the Ask a Question tab within the webinar software, depending upon which one you're on. The webinar is being recorded if you miss any of it and will be available on the Informed Certification website for up to a year. We'll provide a link to that after the webinar. Uh, please send your questions to us through the Ask a Question tab on the lower portion of your screen and we'll get to as many of them during the webinar as we can. Those we can't get to during the webinar, we'll be sure to answer and send to the questioner after the webinar. We may push a few questions out to you during the webinar and hope you will take a few seconds to answer them. We have with us today three of the architects of the Certified Analytics Professional Program, or CAP, if you will, who will cover the agenda. I will introduce them in just a moment. Today we will cover some background information, what exactly is professional certification and who is informs. Then we'll get into the CAP program itself. What are the benefits of CAP? Who can apply? What's on the exam? How do I prepare, apply, and schedule an exam? And how do I use and maintain my certification? As I mentioned, we will welcome your questions and answer all of them either during or after the webinar. And now our panel for today. Scott Nestler is an Army officer and has 20 plus years of experience in military decision making, operations research, management science, and risk analysis. He has worked in both academic and practitioner roles. He is an INFORMS member and is the current chair of the Analytics Certification Board, which is the steering committee of the overall program. Polly Mitchell Guthrie is lead strategist and customer liaison for advanced analytics at SAS. She provides product management and marketing, blog ownership, competitive analysis, market research, and promotion of the R&D division of SAS that develops software for statistics, econometrics, forecasting, operations research, optimization, data mining, and text analytics. She is also an INFORMS member and is the current vice chair of the Analytics Certification Board. Jack Levis is Director of Process Management at UPS and Vice President of Practice Activities at INFORMS. At UPS, Jack has over 35 years of management experience in many capacities. He is currently assigned to corporate engineering and is responsible for creating and executing a vision for operations planning, control, and monitoring processes and systems. He is an INFORMS member, a member of the INFORMS overall board of directors, and a member of the Analytics Certification Board. Also participating in the webinar today from the INFORMS staff is Louise Worley, INFORMS Certification Manager. So without further ado, I would like to turn it over to Polly Mitchell Guthrie who will get us started today. Polly? Thank you, Gary. Um, so as Gary indicated in our agenda, I wanted to start out and give some background around uh, certification uh, to give a context for what we're talking about here. And that is based on a number of questions we've received in the past, we want to clarify what certification is and what it is not. And so certification is a kind of credential, which is, uh, according to this um, Department of Labor um, definition, it's a recognition of a process of meeting a set of defined standards. And we'll talk more about those defined standards as we define them related to analytics a little later in our uh, agenda. But there's lots of ways to do credentials. And so one thing we want to clarify is that we are a certification and not a license. So what I mean by that is that a license is a mandatory credential, and that's typically regulated by the government and granted to regulate the, the practice of a profession, like a doctor or a lawyer or a nurse, something like that. In contrast, certification is voluntary, uh, but it has a similar role in terms of attesting to knowledge and attainment of, of skills and knowledge. And it's often required or preferred by employers. Uh, now, one thing about certification versus a certificate, what we're talking about here today is a certification, which does require demonstration of the competence, in our case, through an exam and some other requirements that we'll talk about. Um, sometimes you'll see a certificate, which is uh, generally recognizes completion of, say, some classes, but may not require demonstrated competence. So what we're going to clarify today is that we're going to be showing, uh, talking about certification, which requires demonstration of competence. So <clears throat> the other thing I want to talk about in terms of background is who INFORMS is. So INFORMS is an acronym that stands for the Institute for Operations Research and Management Science, 
And while we were founded as an organization in 1995, our predecessor organizations date back to the 50s. So we've got a long history of paying attention to operations research, management sciences, and then the application and dissemination of these knowledge areas towards improved decision-making management and operational processes. We've got a large and global membership body. It's about half academic currently, but the growing, a big growing part of our organization is in the, in the practitioner uh, part of our membership. It's a highly educated organization. Uh, half of our members have PhDs, and most people have a have or are pursuing a master's or higher. So why is Inform paying attention to analytics? Well, as I said, we have a long history paying attention to the application of operations research and management science, and we believe that that's a critical part of analytics. We define analytics as the scientific process of transforming data into insight for making better decisions. Informs has uh, undertaken a number of initiatives related to analytics in recent years, and we'll show some evidence of, of why we've done that in just a minute. But some of those examples beyond certification are continuing education courses that are on topics related to analytics. So we've had two recently that we've offered, one around what, what might be we often talk about as soft skills related to the application of analytics, and another related to data visualization. We're also in the very close to finalizing an analytics maturity model. Uh, as you'll read in, in many of the uh, publications that talk about analytics, many organizations are concerned about identifying where am I on the, the path towards becoming an analytically mature organization? How do I benchmark myself against others uh, at my level, and what are the things I need to do to take my organization to the next level? And that's what an analytics maturity model is about. And overall, all these analytics analytical-related initiatives are part of the INFORM's drive to say that we see analytics as a process and that there are many different tools related to uh, that process, but the analytics is a great umbrella term for applying uh, a variety of skill sets to improving decision-making, and that's what our certification exam and certification program is about. So as I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons INFORMS has taken this uh, initiative related to analytics is that if you look at this chart from uh, Google Ingrams, looking at books published over the last uh, many years, you can see trending around which terms are more popular and which ones um, then start to uh, wane a little bit in popularity. And what's really trending up, as you see towards the end of this, this chart, um, the Google Ingrams uh, analysis stops at 2008, so we can't look beyond that. And I think what you'd see is an even uh, steeper tra trajectory for analytics as a topic. And so all these industrial engineering, operations, research, management, science, systems engineering are all part of analytics, but analytics is increasingly an umbrella term that covers all those areas. And just to show some examples from popular press, uh, Gartner, the uh, analyst firm, has, has shown that uh, analytics and business intelligence are still considered the highest priority for CIOs as they look towards their planning for subsequent years. Um, CIO Magazine has written a lot about how business analytics is, is continues to trend very high as a topic. And McKinsey, in an off-quoted uh, study, has reported that there's going to be a huge shortage of people with these skills uh, as we project forward to the what kinds of skills we'll need versus what kinds of uh, people have these skills. All these are reasons why INFORMS has undertaken an initiative related to certification. Next, I want to talk a little bit about how we define analytics at INFORMS. So in a, in a categorization that is common across the industry, we, we've adopted the language of descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive analytics. So when we talk about descriptive analytics, we're primarily looking at historical data what happened in the past and looking for patterns from what has happened that can inform our future actions. And there's, these were called for skills like data modeling, visualization, and regression. Then uh, the next level that we talk about is predictive analytics, and this is really about what could happen. It's, it's looking at the future and it's looking at probabilities and trends, looking into the data for what relationships exist that are not readily apparent or, or, or naturally intuitive. And this is where skills like predictive modeling and data mining can come in, in handy. 
to finally at the top of the chart, and, and there's, there's something of a value chain here. If you look to the right, you can see that, that we would argue that as you move up this chain from what has happened to predicting what could happen to what might be the best action or outcome, that we believe there's higher uh, value to the organization that undertakes these, uh, these levels. And that is that when you undertake uh, techniques like optimization and simulation, you're able to look at what is the best thing that could happen. When we think about what, what are our business or organizational objective is, and we balance the constraints that we may have, say budget or staffing, what would be the best outcome we could have and what decisions could we make based on that. So this is a simple definition, but a, but a good one to get us all on the same page in terms of what we mean when we say analytics. And so why has, as we've undertaken a, a goal of certification specifically, well, the Certified Analytics Professional Program, as I in indicated earlier in the slides, talking about what certification is or what credentialing is, it talks about uh, defining standards. So we wanted to undertake to, to set a, a, some agreement on what qu standards of quality are for the use of analytics. So part of our goals with this program is, is, is to define some of those standards, put a stake in the ground and say these are what we believe are the body of knowledge that somebody applying analytics should have and, and what kinds of job tasks they undertake to do them. Then another part of the, the goals of our program is to identify individuals who have that, uh, that knowledge. And you can see that uh, I'd emphasize the word breadth here. And, and Scott will talk about more about that breadth in a minute, but it's important that people have not just the – uh, the depth of skills in one area, but a breadth of, of knowledge across many areas. Because as, as you saw on the previous slide, in terms of the areas of analytics, there's lots of areas, and, and breadth is important. For any professional, it's important to always continue to demonstrate your competency and to invest in that competency. And then some other things, just as part of running our program, it's important to us that we be software vendor neutral that we be available to all who are eligible, and then in terms of running an actual certification program, there are some standards uh, related to certification programs, and we are aiming towards accreditation in the future. So now that you understand a little bit about INFORMS and how we define analytics and why we've undertaken a certification program, why would you consider it certification? Well, the first thing is, if you recall the McKinsey study I referenced that said there will be a gap between the demand for these kinds of skills and people who have the skills, one key benefit of certification is to advance your own career potential, to set yourself apart, to be able to demonstrate the, to potential employers who are looking for those scarce resources that you are a person with those scarce resources, that, that you can set yourself apart by differentiating the fact that you bothered to go through the trouble of achieving a certification. And what that certification says to an employer is that you have a demonstrated area of competence in the practice of analytics, not just that you studied it in university, but that you can apply what you learn to solving business or organizational problems. It shows initiative that you've invested in your career by demonstrating commitment to this profession, and it may even boost your salary potential when you have a, a bona fide credential that you can point to that says that you have this competency. There are even people who say that they are interested in certification as a, as a personal goal, as, as something that they want to do to prove to themselves that they've learned this information. And finally, it, it demonstrates that you are part of a larger profession and that you believe in the standards that the profession has put forth and that you adhere to them. So in terms of who's behind this certification, INFORMS, as I mentioned, is the, is the sponsoring organization, but as is a best practice amongst organizations pursuing certification, we set up a semi-independent governing body to be responsible for our certification program. And so well, there was a task force that explored setting up the certification and got it off the ground. But as of July, just a few months ago, this semi-independent body, the Analytics Certification Board, um, convened. And you can see the, the list of members beyond the three of us who are on the webinar today. Uh, representing industry, academia, and the government, uh, a broad range of people across the, the field of or the profession of analytics, and we are all proud to participate and support this initiative. So I think I'll pause for a minute here and ask if there are any questions that have come forth, Gary or Louise. Uh, yeah, uh, 
Polly, there's one question that came through. Be glad to pose this to the panel right now. Uh, why does Informs think they should be leading this effort? Well, uh, the reason is that, as I said, we have a long history of paying attention to questions around improved decision making. Uh, the terms used to, uh, for how we go about that may have varied over time, but improved decision making is important to all of us, and we have a long and esteemed history of um, an educated uh, membership, and so we felt that as analytics was a trending term and, and increasingly showing that it's here to stay, that we wanted to be able to put a stake in the ground and say that we believe that there should be some standards, and we would step up and, and lead that initiative. Scott or Gary uh, or uh... well, sure. I can I can um, add to that. Um, you know, we didn't have time to really go through all of Inform's background, but Inform's members um, about eighty percent of the current membership is either have a, a PhD or um, working on their PhD, and a large percent are educators from the best institutions around. So, Inform's was able to leverage its core competency of education. We have some of the best journals in the world um, that are published um, through our members. And, and the thought is that if you're going to create a certification, I know Scott's going to talk about the test in a minute, and in fact, Gary, I see there's a question out there about the test, but um, if you need to create a test to truly test the skill set, uh, no other organization has the breadth of um, educators, those that uh, educate the highest level of, um, of, of exit criteria from a university than informed. So we thought we could leverage our members to actually create a valid test for analytics. Thank you, Jack. Let's take just one more question now and we'll move on. And uh, we'd like to remind everybody that we will answer your question either during the webinar or afterwards by email. Uh, so the next question is, what kind of basic analytic skills does this certification test for? How is this better than a software certification like SAS? Well, I, this is Polly. I think I'll answer that since I, uh, I, I work for SAS and to say certainly SAS certification is a, is a great certification we're proud of. But I'd, I'd say the way it's different is that at SAS we're certifying people in the application of certain knowledge in SAS. So can you do logistic regression in SAS? This certification is different. It's completely software uh, independent. We're not tied to any vendor. What we're concerned about is do you understand what logistic regression is, when you might apply it, what kind of data you need, uh, what other considerations you'd have, what the next steps might be, those kinds of things. So it's, it's completely independent of any software and about the body of knowledge itself. Uh, this is Scott here, and I think that some of what I'm about to go through in the next uh, 10 slides or so will help to answer that question a little bit further. When, uh, when we sat down to discuss that, well, what should be on the exam, and keep in mind the exam is only one portion of the certification. We will uh, we'll go into the other pieces of that in a bit. But with regard to the, am the exam and what it ought to cover, um, somebody brought up a quote regarding T-shaped skills, and this idea has been around for, you know, 20 years or so. And if you think about a person who has a breadth of skills as represented by the, the top crossbar on the T across a wide, uh, you know, wide range of areas within a particular field or profession, but then also maybe has depth in, uh, in one or possibly more areas. You know, maybe they've done a PhD in a particular uh, topic and, you know, they have quite a bit of depth in one area. Well, when we looked at this, we said, you know, there are educational degree programs out there in academia that already cover the depth piece very, very well, and that where we thought we could add, uh, make a contribution was to come up with an exam that would test across the breadth. Now, that doesn't mean it's a, a real thin line with no depth and you just have to know buzzwords. There, there has to be some, uh, some level of depth there, which is why the, the T that's shown there on the, on the slide does have some thickness to it. But we're going to test across the top part of the T, across a breadth of the, the field of, of analytics. So uh, let me go into that in a, in a little more detail here now. So what we've got is a uh, what we call a job task analysis, and this was developed by a group of people from across, um, you know, 
a mix of academics and practitioners from our membership and, and a few folks who are not INFORMS members, but I mean they're from different application areas and sectors. I mean from IT, finance, government, manufacturing, retail, education, healthcare, et cetera. I mean lots, lots of different application areas. And, and we wanted to make sure that the, the exam as represented by the job task analysis covers those three different uh, types or levels of analytics, those segments we talked about, the descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive. And the way it's organized is we have, we have these domains at the top level, and, and there are seven of them. I'll show you what they are here in a minute. And what those are are groupings of tasks, the things that analytics professionals have to do in order to do their job. And then below that, or underpinning that, is a larger list of knowledge statements, the things you have to, you know, that an analytics professional has to know in order to do those tasks. Um, so what I'm going to show you here is the domain and the tasks. Those are all um, available. Um, they're published so you can see what's on there, but I'm going to highlight these for you here so you get a feel for what's actually on the exam. So here are the seven domains of analytics practice that, uh, that this group came up with over a, uh, a multi-day process with significant refinement, you know, after getting feedback from those not involved in the development. And you see here these seven domains, they look like they sort of happen in order, and in general they do. You start off with a business problem, um, and, and you have to frame it, and then you move to maybe an analytics problem, and then you have to go and say, well, what data is available to me or, or should I have here? And then once I know that, maybe what, what methods or what approaches could we follow? Well, then let's go build some models, deploy, deploy a model or some type of solution, and then eventually manage that over the life cycle. But I think uh, anyone who's done this uh, type of work in practice has found it isn't completely linear like this. There are often feedback loops at various stages here where you find yourself going back to one of the perhaps earlier domains. So don't necessarily think of it as a, a linear progression here. The, uh, the weights you see there indicate how many questions there are on the exam as a percentage of the total number of questions. So if there's 100 questions on an exam, somewhere between 12 and 18 of them will be about the first domain, business problem framing. You notice that you know, some areas have higher weights than others. They're not all equally weighted. The, the highest one is data, 18 to 26 percent. Um, you know, some of the other ones uh, down towards the bottom of the slide there have only a few questions. So this gives you an idea of what, what those involved in developing the exam saw as the relative importance of these domains and the tasks and knowledge statements that, that are contained in them to, to an analytics practitioner. So I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and walk through each of these a little bit in a little more detail to give you a sense of what's in each of these seven domains. So the first domain business problem framing, or maybe it's not a problem, but a question that uh, you know, your company or a client would like you to help them answer. But it's, it's, a, it's inherently a business problem at this stage. It's not an analytics problem. In fact, it might not even be amenable to an analytics solution. That's one of the tasks that has to be performed by an analytics practitioner. You'll notice here that there are a couple of uh, bullets that a couple of tasks here listed, like obtain or receive the problem statement, and then you know, later down, um, obtain stakeholder agreement. So you notice that there are some communication skills that are woven throughout. They don't just appear in this domain. They appear in, in other domains. And in a little while, when uh, Jack talks about some of the other aspects of the, uh, the CAP program, of the overall certification, he'll mention something called soft skills, which one of the things that that relates to is the ability to communicate um, you know, both receiving information and, and doing presentations. And you'll see those skills woven throughout, I think, all seven of these domains, or at least in a, a fair number of them. So this is the first piece, and maybe it's a little softer rather than, you know, more technical, quantitative, using a particular technique or, uh, or a method. But this is where typically the, the process starts. Okay, moving on to the next slide. Um, we'll see here domain two, which is the analytics problem um, framing. You take the, the business problem, reformulate it as an analytics problem, figure out, you know, what are my inputs and outputs, how are they related, 
You know, what assumptions do I need to make? How am I going to measure success for this, for this project um, or this study? And, and there's, again, another communications piece, obtaining stakeholder agreement. So there's, there's the second domain. Moving on to the third domain, which is data. You, know, you have to figure out, well, what data is available? What data might I need to have to attempt to answer this question or solve this problem? How do I get that? Once I get it, it probably isn't clean. We need to do some harmonization, some, some rescaling, some cleaning, you know, sharing it with different members of a team perhaps, doing some initial analysis to look at the data either visually or with you know, maybe some statistical tests to figure out what relationships exist, and then you know, more communication here, document and reporting findings. You know, probably need to give some feedback to, uh, to the end user, to the client, to the customer, to show what you've found so far because that may, you know, adjust or change the direction of the, of the project. And there may be some revision necessary to uh, either the business problem statement or the analytics problem statement. So once you have some data, one of the next things that has to happen, although in some ways they happen somewhat hand in hand, is, you know, well, how am I going to, going to approach this problem? What method am I going to use to solve it? And so you consider the various problem-solving approaches or methods that are out there, maybe do some software selection. Now this, again, doesn't, uh, we're not getting down into the how to use any particular type or brand of software from any vendor, but knowing what type of tool would be appropriate um, in a given situation is useful. You'll notice that the last two uh, tasks that are listed here have asterisks next to them and a note that refers to that down at the bottom that says tasks beyond the scope of testing in the CAP exam. While these tasks clearly have to be done by an analytics professional, they are not tested by the, the CAP exam that, that we're discussing here. Um, there are some things that are less amenable to being tested in, in this type of an exam and as, as mentioned, the exam is not the certification. It's one of really five pieces to the certification that Jack will talk to later. And some of the other pieces get at this um, as well. As we've mentioned, there's, you know, there's an education requirement, there's some soft skills, and I'll let him talk more about that. But anything you see with an asterisk here is not tested on the exam, even though those tasks do fall within these domains. Okay, the fifth domain is deployment. Sorry, model building. I'm getting ahead of myself here. The fifth domain is model building, and again, a significant portion of this is not tested on the exam. Uh, the exam does not have you actually going and building models, you know, which often take hours, days, or, or longer to do. But instead, um, sort of knowing how models get built, and, and again, some additional communication uh, skills here uh, are important. So I'm not going to have anyone build a, uh, a model you know, as part of the exam, but, but there will be some, uh, some testing of knowing how to run and evaluate models. If you're presented with results from a model, how do you evaluate it? What is it telling you? Okay, now to the deployment domain, domain six. You know, once a model is built, it typically needs to be validated against you know, the actual situation that you're facing uh, in the business problem. You likely have to deliver a report with some findings, um, maybe have to come up with some requirements for an actual you know, production scale version of the model, and then once it's out there, support the deployment of it and, and actually get it out in use. But of course, the task doesn't stop at that point. There needs to be some life cycle management of the model over time. You know, it needs to be clear what, you know, what the model, how it was structured, how it was built initially. There needs to be a, a look at how quality, um, you know, how quality changes over time. Maybe, you know, the situation changes, maybe some of the inputs are changed, uh, underlying relationships, and, and that it needs to be updated at some point. Um, so need to track the model quality over time and maybe make some adjustments. Also, there might be training required um, in, order to, uh, you know, in, in order to deploy and maintain the model. So you may have a role, in act, an analytics pro professional may have a role in that. And you know, over time, ultimately, you know, what value is this uh, providing to the business? 
is it still providing value or does it need some, some adjustment or is it time to potentially retire uh, the model? So those are the seven domains. As I discussed, they consist of, you know, typically four to six task statements and then under each of those tasks that you have to be able to do as an analytics professional are supporting knowledge statements. There'd be too many of those to list here at this point, but um, I think I'll stop at this point and see if we have any questions that I can answer. Gary? Yeah, some great questions are coming in. Uh, let me go ahead and pose this one to the panel. Can I assume that the certification process is not dependent on a certain industry, say like manufacturing or finance? The industry knowledge is therefore independent. I do not see anyone in your team with a healthcare background, whereas I have been in healthcare my whole career. Would anybody like to take that one? Well, th this is Jack. I certainly will. Um, first of all, it's 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 meant to be a basic um, practitioner. It's not meant to be a uh, a vertical into healthcare or manufacturing or military. Um, as you look at the, the list of folks that are on the board right now, you don't see a healthcare professional there. Um, but um, as we move into the next board, um, we do have uh, at least one healthcare professional that's on the, the board that's coming up in January. And then the input into where we've been, there have been multiple um, healthcare professionals on the task forces that helped us set some structure on the committees that worked on um, the study guides and the committees that worked on the exam itself. So it's, to close it, it's not dependent on a specific vertical, and I think we've done a pretty good job of getting input from many verticals. And hopefully as you look at this, um, domains that we have and the tasks within them, um, we've gotten very good comments on those being accurate um, and uh, people seem to um, resonate with, with what the definition is of the work that a professional does. Yeah, I'd like to add something to what Jack just, just said um, and it ties back to something Polly had mentioned earlier about you know, why Informs um, believes it's a good organization to, to offer this certification. Again, having people from across a wide variety of sectors and application areas, um, we have, and I don't even know what the number is, there's probably two dozen what we would call sections or societies, subgroups within Informs that, that are across those different um, sectors or application areas or verticals, you know, people who do the same sorts of things. And one of the ways that we reached out as we developed the job task analysis and the, the tasks and the, and the knowledge statements, as well as the exam question development itself, was we reached out to those to people in all of the sections in society to make sure we were getting a broad cross-section from across um, all areas of, of analytics not, and not too narrowly focused. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Let's take one more right now, then we'll move on. Uh, here's the question. Looks like deployment is given relatively lower weight versus other aspects of analytics. What is the board's viewpoint on the importance of communicating the conclusions and ability to influence others with the results of the analytics work? So, let, let me go ahead and grab that one, if you don't mind, again, Gary. Mm -hmm. um, the ability to communicate, and hopefully you'll see this as we go through the, the final section, um, absolutely um, understood as a huge um, area. Um, sometimes we call it soft skills. Sometimes we call it demonstration of um, value add. But the ability to communicate is absolutely included, and you've seen multiple times during the job task analysis um, uh, delivering a report or getting some agreement uh, from stakeholders. When you looked at the weighting of those different areas, the way we came across that is once we finished the domains, the tasks, and the knowledge, um, we then uh, looked at each of those areas and said, what percent of time does an analytics professional spend in that domain, and how important is the domain? And through the use of a, a consultant who's a psychometrician, um, he went through some standard ways of categorizing what percent of the test then should be in each of those domains. And it was, again, based on the importance of the domain and the amount of time spent. When that was done, we sent that back out to a larger audience and ended up with the final results here. So we think we've covered it pretty well. Um, and that we had to balance both, the amount of time spent and the importance. 
Thank you, Jack. Would you like to continue with the presentation? Sure. So I'm going to go ahead into the, the final section of the presentation, and I'd like, you know, I'd like to start with what we call the five E's, and that's um, what does it take to become uh, certified in analytics? Uh, the five E's, um, the first four, are what it takes even to be able to um, take the exam. So let's start with education and experience. This is meant not to be a certification for someone just coming out of school with a bachelor's or master's or even a PhD. This is someone who's been doing the work in the field. So the first two E's are dependent on the type of education and the length of experience. And you can see that here. Um, if um, you're like my son, and you have a uh, bachelor's degree in liberal arts, a film, you're going to need seven years of experience doing analytics work. And you'll need to document that and give that to Louise. Uh, if you have a PhD, then you only need three years' worth of experience. So the amount of experience needed to document depends on the degree um, um, that you have, um, the level, and the type of degree. I'm going to skip exam for a second. Um, you have to be able to show your effectiveness, and that's the soft skills. That's the validation of the communication that the previous question asked. So there needs to be some validation. That can be uh, a, a, a person you report to validating that you have the soft skills. You can go ahead and communicate with clients. You can communicate your position appropriately. Um, or it can be by uh, demonstrating work you've done. Or it could be through a coworker, but there needs to be some demonstration of soft skills in order to hit, pass the hurdle. You have to um, agree to a code of ethics, and then finally, after all those, you can take an exam, or the exam is the final true step. The exam is where um, we are going to cover the questions in those domains, and we are going to um, appropriately have the right number of questions within each. This is just an example of analytics-related degrees. This is not an exhaustive list. Um, you know, certainly, uh, if you have um, if you have a degree in um, experimental psychology, you certainly learned a lot of um, math and analytics along the way. So, this is just an example of some of the degrees that would be considered analytics related. And if there's a question, uh, Louise um, handles that and makes the determination through the ACB. Uh, one of the E's is the exam. And I'd like to talk to that. This is the most important portion of the certification, in, in my opinion. And this is the part where we leveraged uh, the educators that INFORMS brings to the table. Uh, the exam, the first version of it, um, was completed over a year ago, um, and each test version has 100 questions that are multiple choice. And if you look at the, the exam um, examples that are in the INFORMS um, or the certification handbook, you can get an idea of what some of those questions are. Um, I'm mentioning the exam and going into a little detail on the exam uh, because this is where the effort was. The exam, as I said, was completed over a year ago, multiple, many months before the first test was given. And then it was vetted out um, in practice runs by uh, many of the thought leaders, those that are, are the most knowledgeable in analytics, those that are the, the leading edge that, that hire people. And the question was, is this exam properly um, focusing on the right areas, and is it pointing out those that are capable of doing the job versus those that are not? The last place anybody would want to be is an exam that fails everybody or passes everybody. So um, a lot of time was spent in that exam. There's multiple versions of it. Uh, we use a psychometrician to help determine if each question is correct and valid and measuring what we're trying to measure. Um, and uh, you will find the exam to be rigorous. Um, but multiple people have said it was rigorous, but at the end of the day, it was fun. So we're very proud of that exam that does a great job of pointing out those that uh, may be able to do some Excel pivot tables and call that analytics versus those that have the correct math skills um, to provide business gain. For each question, there's only one correct answer. It takes about three hours. That's the time limit. Most people are done in the two-and-a-half-hour range to two hours and 50 minutes. Uh, range. Um, of course, some folks double check their answers up to the last minute. At the moment, it's a pencil and paper format. It's in a proctored location. Um, 
in the future, it will be computer-based testing similar to an SAT where you can go to a test location and take it on a computer, you know, obviously not on your home computer. But at the moment, we've been distributing this with a proctored environment, pencil and paper. You turn in the, the Scantron with the number two pencil, and um, we measure it from there. Uh, we will give a four-function calculator, um, uh, and that way you have what you need to um, to perform the math within there, but we give it and we return it back. And as I said, it is in a proctored environment. Um, preparing, this is the number one question. How do I, pre how do I prepare? This is, this is not like a certificate where you go to a class, um, you're taught the material, and then you test the material you taught. The material that we're testing is what people do in their jobs. We're testing that someone is an analytics professional. That's the curriculum that we're testing to. So uh, there is a study guide that's available for a free download right now, um, and, that's be and that's because we want to get this draft in people's hands and get comments back. So if someone's interested, download the study guide. Um, give us some comments on that study guide, and Louise will determine if the comments are appropriate, and then a hundred dollar discount on the exam will be um, provided to you, at least through 2013 while we are um, um, finalizing the study guide. There is a candidate handbook that I mentioned. It will take you through much of the material we went through today, um, but it will also give you a list of questions. So there's references in there, but there's some sample questions. Last I looked, about 24 of them. So you'll get an idea, at least by looking at that expanded set of questions, whether you have the skills to truly pass the test. Um, and then there are continuing education programs um, that are available on the INFORMS site. I do want to talk about um, um, the exam dates. As I said, they're pencil and paper. We've given a number of exam exams already. We, you can see the ones that are coming up, and then 2014, many more will be coming, including the computer-based testing. So um, you can look at this list, see if one's right, go to the INFORMS website, um, or uh, determine if there's one near you and then uh, make plans for 2014 sh should you want to. Um, I, know, um, I, I know that to do this you have to follow an application process that's on the INFORM site. Uh, the first thing you do is you complete the form, you give the information that you need, you acknowledge the code of ethics, uh, you have to give your transcripts. Uh, there is a $100 application fee if you're not an INFORMS member. If you are an INFORMS member, that's a benefit of membership. That fee is waived. Um, and then once you've passed all the pieces, so the, um, the soft skills, the, um, the validation of the transcripts and the education, then you're eligible to take the test. The exam can be scheduled online. All right. Um, I know there was... Um, questions is, okay, now I have the cap, what do I do? Well, we're in the, the process of, of gaining some critical maths, maths on this um, program. Those that have taken it are proudly wearing uh, the cap uh, pin that you'll get on their lapel. Uh, we have some, um, some, some um, employers that are starting to put cap preferred on job um, applications, and by the way, if you're if you're out there looking for a job, Informs has a, a wonderful new um, job board that has many openings there. You know, there's obviously more openings than there are people, and CAP will be uh, certainly um, a differentiator at some point in the future. There was a question on maintaining the CAP. Does it expire? Yes, it does. A best practice with a certification is that you have to show not only that you're able to pass a test, but there needs to be some continuing education type units. There needs to be some um, professional development. So you can look at here that every three years you have to uh, recertify, not by retaking a test, but you do need to at least have 30 professional development units. Um, each unit is one hour of activity. And if you look at the chart on the right, um, the 30 units can be across multiple of these domains. Some of them have a minimum that you have to have. For instance, um, you know, education has to be eight. Some of them have a maximum. So um, doing work in the field can provide professional development units, but there's a maximum that you can get for that. So this gives you an idea of how to maintain it, how to log the units. You can log them on the uh, website, and then you're um, certified again for the next three years. 
All right, our last slide. How to get a hold of uh, uh, folks. There is an INFORMS website on uh, certification. You can see it, it right there. Uh, there's an email you can go ahead and get a hold of. Uh, a phone number will ring directly to uh, Louise and or Gary, um, who are managing the program for INFORMS. Um, I think, Gary, that covers my last slide, and then we have a few minutes left for questions. We do. Thank you very much, Jack. Uh, first, uh, I know the panel has been watching the questions uh, scroll by, and thanks, everyone, for the questions you've sent in. Uh, do any panel members have a question they would like to tackle? If not, I can, uh, I can pose a few. Well, sure. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and pose one then. Um, would you think the certification is suitable for a fresh PhD graduate? So, such graduate has done a lot of analytical work in real-world projects, but had not worked full-time in the industry yet. Well, let me grab that first, and I don't know how to answer it for a specific person in a specific case without looking at that. But I went through the you, – you have to have, a, with a Ph.D., assuming it's in an analytics-related field, a minimum of three years work experience. Now, that doesn't mean that work experience had to happen after the PhD, but if um, while you're, you're doing your PhD, you did interning, you had a job uh, maybe that was doing the work while you're getting your education or maybe before your PhD you did it, that would count. We have a number of universities right now that are looking at the CAP exam and seeing the value and are looking at, um, let's say, a master's program, you know, those with an advanced degree, that have already done multiple years of work experience, so that covers the experience level. Uh, what they're looking at is when they're finished with their master's degree, the final test is the CAP certification. So they've met the education already, they've met the work experience already, the work that's done at the school will meet the soft skills, and then the final piece is the CAP exam. So uh, from that perspective, sure, as long as you're meeting all of the other criteria, um, I think that works out very well, and we're seeing a number of universities asking us to do that. Thank you, Jack. Uh, Paul, or Scott? Uh, I saw a number of questions about the study guide, and so there is a study guide that's been pre prepared for the exam. It's on the website, and uh, I also saw some questions related to how you actually download it. What you do is you see it's broken down into sections. If you click the radio button for the section you're interested in uh, you and say you want to give comments, it will then show you that part of the guide. So uh, it may look like you're just saying you want to give comments, but the way to read it is to say you want to give comments and then open up that section. Thank you, Polly. Uh, there's an interesting question on the, uh, well, I'll just go ahead and uh, quote it. Is there a planned obsolescence for the certification, such as every five years to be current on the certification, you would need to recertify? I think we covered that in the um, professional development units, unless I missed the question. So the, the professional development units, and it's three years, not five, uh, that's when it expires, but you don't need to retake the test, but at least you have to show the professional development units along the way. Um, the INFORMS is adding and adding um, preferred service providers or recognized service providers, let's pull it that way, where the certification board says, yes, we believe that this organization um, has suitable um, professional development training classes, and if you went through that organization, you're, you're, you're certain at least that INFORMS will recognize that as a uh, development unit. And one other, one follow-on comment with that, although you don't have to retake the exam to, uh, to maintain your certification, you just have to complete the, the various professional development units from the, the different categories, you know, that are possible, the exam will change over time. I mean, the exam that's given today may look very different from the one that's given three, four, six years from now. I mean, as the field changes, it, the exam is changing essentially every year, you know, somewhat not on a continuous process, but at discrete time intervals you know, fairly frequently. Okay, here's a, here's a question for the panel. Uh, how do you promote the CAP credential as a badge of approval that industry leaders should look for when hiring analytics professionals? All right, I'll jump in, Gary. Um, if you looked at one of Polly's slides, 
it talked about um, Informs is taking on outreach. So I view the certification at the moment, it's somewhat of a chicken and egg. Um, uh, uh, with, uh, until there's enough um, caps out there, it's hard for an organization to say, I have to have a cap. On the other hand, until organizations start saying cap preferred, it's hard to uh, say, well, then why do I need it if nobody cares? So Informs is doing both at the same time. It's providing the cap designation as a way to um, highlight those that are, are skilled, at the same time reaching out to organizations, um, and that's one of the reasons we have a certification board that represents many organizations, to get the organizations to represent um, or, or recognize the CAP as a program. So I think this will um, certainly gain steam over time. Um, it will certainly start picking up speed um, as the momentum comes, but it's a question of doing both at the same time, which is what INFORMS is doing. I would like to point out that INFORMS you know, took a lot of study into this before we took the first step into the CAP and looked at certification in other areas. So, for instance, uh, Project Management Institute, which has the a PMP certification, a project management professional, you know, they went a number of years with only a handful of people certified, where today they represent 500,000 people. Um, I believe, you know, that, I don't know that this will get to 500,000, but as analytics becomes that important into business, and I'm speaking all over the place on the value of analytics and senior leaders and CIOs care, the need for this is apparent. That hasn't gone away. So it's just a matter of time when you attack it from both ends. I see a number of questions related to kind of the timing of the exam and work experience. And uh, what I would say is, is um, <clears throat> and Louise, you may want to add to this since you've been evaluating all the people who've applied so far, but the, the intent is that somebody have not just academic experience alone, but that they have professional work experience applying analytics to address uh, business problems. So we're looking for people who have experience outside of their academic experience. Uh, and as Jack said, it depends on what degree you have and how directly relevant it is to the applicant to the, the field of analytics. So we do want work experience to be part of your um, your what, what's required. On the other hand, there were some questions about people who have a lot of work experience. If I have 30 years of work experience, is this relevant for me? And the, and the question is, then you have to evaluate what is what the benefits of certification are and how does that match it for you. Uh, to the degree that certification is a differentiating credential, it may be that you have a, if you have a lot of experience, work experience, you have demonstrated you have the ability to apply analytics to solve business problems, and you may not need to differentiate yourself as much if you have that work experience all in that field. But if you were trying to uh, switch from, to use an earlier question, um, banking to healthcare, you might want to show that you have some experience uh, applying analytics to healthcare, and it, certification might be a differentiator for you. So some of those are questions that would be hard to us to, to answer for everyone, and, and might come up to an individual uh, decision of, as to why you're interested in, in, it, in the certification program. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Polly. This is Louise. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And we are at the top of the hour. We will soon be ending this program. If you have any questions that you think of between the time we end and whenever, just send them to me, certification at informs.org. We'll be answering all the questions we've received during this session. And again, I thank you for attending. And thank our speakers, Jack Levis, Scott Nessler, and Polly Mitchell Guthrie.